Okay, this morning we're gonna talk about how to actually edit the CSS styles inside Shopify. Now typically we talk about how to modify liquid code and how to change things in the theme settings, but the other day I realized that it might be a good idea just to show you guys how to change basic CSS inside the dashboard. So if we hop over to the screen, now I'm not gonna go over how to use the Google Inspector and how to actually learn CSS. Um, I'm gonna make the assumption that you know how to modify CSS and you're gonna need to know how to where to go inside Shopify in order to make the actual change. Because the dashboard is constantly changing and they're making updates to it, things can move around and they might not be where you would expect them. So if we're on our dashboard and we go to online store, and then we come up with the drop down below it, we have themes. And if we go to themes, we're gonna get all of our current themes that are installed on our store. Now Shopify allows you to install multiple themes so that you can test out different uh, versions of your website without modifying the live version. So what I usually recommend is you take your live version, so say for example, we have pipeline version 4.3.2 and we duplicate it. Um, the reason we wanna do this is in case we make any errors inside modifying the CSS, we don't want it to affect our live users. Now I'm working on a demo store, so it's not that big of a deal because I'm the only person who can see it but once you launch your store you want to be able to go and make changes to your online store and then once all your changes are approved and they are set properly you can go back in and you can uh, publish them so after I've copied out my theme I usually like to go and rename it and I rename it to the name of the theme and I call it development now the way I work is if there is a development theme that exists on the store, that's where I'm making all the changes. Once I'm finished with the development theme, what I will do is I will publish the development theme. I will rename the active theme to the date that I published it, as you can see down here. Um, and then I will rename development to active. So if it ever gets unpublished, I know exactly which theme needs to get published back up again to restore changes. So now that I've created a development theme, I wanna go to actions and I wanna go to edit code. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna take us into the theme editor. Now it's gonna take us not to the theme customizer. It's important not to get the two confused. So if we have a look at customize theme, we can see the theme customizer, which is where Shopify really directs you to try and go and make changes to your site. Because it has all of the built-in sections that are already available for Shopify, which are drag and drop, which are easy to use. Uh, but for advanced users, you wanna be able to get to your code and that is done through that actions menu. Now once you're into the theme editor you have a bunch of folders on the left hand side which make up your theme and what you want to be going to is you want to be going to the assets directory. Now the assets directory basically is anything that includes CSS, JavaScript or any images that you're going to be pulled into your website that are dependent or that are theme dependent. So if we're in the assets directory, we're gonna look for the theme.scss.liquid. This is where your theme styles are gonna be posted. Now I caution you, you shouldn't make any changes to the theme.scss file if you can help it. What I would recommend is you go to the bottom of the theme file, and you add either any of your custom CSSs below the line that's placed in there to add custom CSS, or you could do what I like to do, which is, is create a separate asset called custom CSS, which allows you to put all of your CSS that you're gonna create independent of the theme CSS. And the reason you wanna do that is because the theme file contains a framework and you don't wanna be modifying frameworks because if you modify frameworks, it can have knock-on effects down the line. Um, this is something that you're probably familiar with if you've worked with CSS before. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually include a file here so that we can go and make the changes. So let's go and write the code to include a CSS file. So we're gonna write import, quotation marks, and then we're gonna go custom.css, and then we're gonna close it. Now, once we've written that, we need to actually go and create the file. So let's create the new asset on the left-hand side. We're gonna create a blank file. We're gonna choose the kind of file. We're gonna create a CSS file, and we're gonna call it custom.css. Now, for the advanced users, you can you can create SCSS files, so if you want to use variables, you can create a liquid uh, CSS file, so it will render the CSS file and pull in your liquid variables before it pumps it out. For the sake of this demo, we're going to stick to just a CSS file um, so that I can show you how to make changes. So we're going to add that into our assets, and you can see it's now come up here. 
and we're going to save our theme liquid. Now we're going to add a custom CSS onto our custom.css file just to show that it's working. Um, this way we can confirm that we can go in at any time and make changes to our custom file and it will update on the website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, body and then I'm going to do order four pixels solid red. And what this is going to do is if this is connected properly, when we refresh the page, we should get a solid red border that goes around the whole thing. So if I refresh our theme, we don't see anything show up. And the reason we don't see anything show up is because we actually have to preview the theme. So we have to hit the preview button on the top because we're working in a demo theme. We need to be able to see our site that's not live. And now you can see there's a nice red border around the whole outside of our website, which means now anything that we modify inside the custom CSS is going to make modifications to our website. So that's basically it. I hope that this was a helpful little tutorial that'll show you guys how to edit CSS inside Shopify. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this video. I make a new video every Thursday. If you guys have any questions or something that you would like to have the answers posted on this channel for Shopify, please leave a comment down below. I always read those comments and get back to you with whatever I can to help. You can also check out my website where I have complete blog posts and screenshots that go through all of the videos that I've created on this channel. So that's it for me. Hope you guys are having a good one and we'll catch you in the next one.